today's hot. Hello, greetings, bonjour, guten tag. Welcome to another edition. I'm back out metal detecting today with the XP Days 2. It's almost 30 degrees today, absolutely roasting hot. Today, I'm gonna to show you my tips and tricks for how to metal detect in such a hot, hot environment on a hot day. You know, tips and things that will keep you cool and uh, so you can enjoy your day out metal detecting in the baking sun and the heat. So yeah, the most obvious tip for hot weather metal detecting is of course wear sun cream protect your skin i really enjoy this night three night four it's small it's deep ish but it could be junk something not quite right about it but there might be just iron or something nearby but yeah I like this let's have a look the weather today is stunning 20 degrees, sunny, a cloud in the sky. But surely, no way in a million years is it going to be. <laughs> it's a glass bottle top and it says Claxo on it. Imagine if that was Celtic gold. <laughs> Never mind. A deep faint 84 can only mean one thing, and that is a rabbit net weight made of lead, hole all the way through it, perhaps medieval. Not entirely sure yet on the dates of these, but I find loads. I must have had 30 out of here by now. And that is swiftly followed by another one. Mid 80s, seven or eight inches down, and we've got lead rabbit net weight number two. Well, I've just had this out of the ground. It was at least the depth of the pinpointer. I think it's lead, but it's really clean and shiny and it's almost a perfect rectangle with a line down the middle. I found several of these on other occasions, but I've no idea what it is. If anyone might know what that could have been, leave me a comment because I have no idea. And then just like that, from one to two in the space of 30 seconds, three feet apart. Again, I ask for your input, guys, because I'm stumped. What are they? What could they possibly be? Well, I've just pulled this out of the ground now. A chunk of bronze or brass. It's very strange, odd shaped, but I find quite a few pieces like this on here. I'd love to know what it all is and why there's so many big chunks of random bronze. Is it to do with a mill? I'd love to hear your thoughts. What it sounded like, this was the signal. It's a very strange signal. So, filling your holes in on hot weather metal detecting, I will always, always take a small piece of soil out the bottom and spread it around the hole. You know, it'll blow away within a day. Uh, and, you know, then I compress, I stand on the clod, Press it in nicely so that no hot air can get at, get down and inside it and uh, lead to killing the grass. And then you're left with a nice, perfectly flush finish. What you don't want to happen is for the, the clod to be sitting above the ground because then all that's gonna happen is you'll kill the grass and there'll be a yellow disc for about three or four weeks or until there's some heavy rain. So yeah, I always, always, always try to be as neat as possible respect the land, respect nature, jobs are gun. Well, this is my next target. It was a big fat 86, four or five inches down, and it's a Kia Scutcheon. Didn't record the signal because I knew it wasn't going to be anything uh, exciting, but, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Probably Georgian, maybe. It's a big old key. Well, I've just had this out of the ground. It was in the 70s, 76, it's round. I think it's bronze, but I'm not entirely sure. It's got a beautiful old patina on it. You know, that's the kind of item that would wax really well. It's smooth. Yeah, I've no idea what it is though. 
I'm guessing something to do with the mill again. But yeah, it feels beautiful. Old. I believe I've got my first coin here. It's coming in, solid 86. It's about six inches deep, I've opened it up. To me, that is looking like a big penny. Oh, that's the imprint. There's the big penny. There's the big penny. And look at that, we've got Edward, Mr. Baldy. Edward the seventh, big penny. I'm gonna clean this up and I'll show you a close up. As you can see, it's not in too bad condition. It's very smooth, very shiny. Not a bad patina on it, it's a little bit crusty look. The date on there, it's looking like 1906. British, pre-decimal, big penny of Edward the Seventh. That's cool, I don't mind that. So what's the most important piece of kit that you take with you on a hot metal detecting adventure like today? A bottle of water. But what's even better is a bottle of iced water. And better still, a bottle of ice water with some lime in it. So yeah, insanely important that you bring this on a hot day like today. <sighs> this is a signal I'm extremely fond of. High pitched, high numbers, 93 look. It's deep-ish, it's small. Extremely consistent, that has to be a coin. If I'm lucky it's silver, if I'm not it's a Georgian copper. If I'm really unlucky it's a modern 1P. Just there. Absolutely beautiful, sweet, clear, repeatable, very coin-like. Don't mind, don't mind digging signals like that on a hot day. I can already see that I've got a big fat coin down there, look. We've got a big old George III copper penny. Look at the size of that. That is monstrous. I'm going to give this a clean up and I'm going to show you because it looks to be in pretty cool condition. Well, just using the sweat on my fingers, I can see that it is in really good condition for a 200 year old copper coin that's been submerged in wet soil for two centuries. The date on there is 1806. That is King George III. So this is a little bit interesting. Can you see that? I can see a number four stamped into this coin. How very interesting. I would love to know why that is there, who did it and what for what reason. But yeah, my big George III penny has got a four stamped on it. Let me know your thoughts on that. My next key item of kit for hot weather metal detecting is a cap. You need a cap to protect your head from the sun. Yes, I do have some hair, but it's very thin and I will get a sunburned scalp if I don't wear a cap. You can also wear it backwards, protect the back of your neck from sunburn, but then you're going to get a sunburned forehead. So yeah, there's probably better hats out there suited to uh, suited hot weather metal detecting, but yeah, this is what I wear. You know, this hobby can be very, very bizarre at times. In eight years, I've never found one of these. Yet yeah, three or four days before I filmed this video, I saw a guy find something similar to this and he pulled out a little a little piece of paper and on it was a phone number and I reckon that's what this is going to be perhaps of a lost dog look at that <laughs> I'm not going to show you the whole thing but <laughs> it's just so bizarre so so bizarre I'm going to ring him up <laughs> a little note out of this little metal capsule thing it's obviously off a dog's collar isn't it Another important piece of kit for me is a nice lightweight pair of trousers. I see too many people wearing shorts on days like this. What's gonna happen to them? They're gonna get sunburnt legs and they're gonna get bitten by mosquitoes on their legs. So yeah, nice lightweight outdoor pair of trousers. Jobs are good. Even more bizarrely, my very next find on the surface in 84, and it's another dog, a lost dog, and the dog's called Holin. I've hidden the number. But yeah, that's cool. I might go and deliver that back because there's an address on the back. It's like new. My next tip is another simple one. Wear a white t-shirt. If you wear a black t-shirt, you're going to get hot and absorb all the sun's rays, the sun's heat. If you wear a white t-shirt, you're going to reflect some of it, so you're going to be cooler. Right on the footpath here. So I have to be very careful, don't make a mess. I've got an 86. For me, that has to be an old quid or a big penny.
as you can see on this occasion I've dug a three-sided hole so this will just slot straight back in you can immediately see that dark green that we know so well and look it's a big old penny it's very worn a little bit crusty it's looking like George V I'll give it a little clean and I'll show you so what we've done there quick wipe on my sweaty palms and then we can see George V pretty decent condition the date on there 1917 another British big old pre-decimal penny over 100 years old happy with that cool a little bit of soil out close the door Jobs are good. My next piece of advice for hot weather metal detecting, take a break. Take lots of breaks. Or even better, take a break under a tree, in the shade, you know, under a wall. It doesn't have to be a big tree. Well, I've been taking my own advice. Metal detecting under this tree got a lovely clear 75 which is an odd number and look at this I've never seen anything like it it's foreign I reckon don't think it's silver as it's green well let's have a look I wonder if it's French it looks like it says one cent I'm gonna give this a very very light clean and then I'm gonna show you I think it's French well, I don't think it is French. I think it might be Dutch, Austrian or German around that area. It's like a lion or something on there. Maybe a shield. I'm not entirely sure. If anyone recognises it, give me a shout. But it definitely says one cent on this side. Unfortunately, it's going to crumble to pieces, I think. Well, it seems to have a milled edge, which is rather interesting. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this is silver. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure on that. My next metal detecting hot weather tip Hit the shaded spots first. If you've got some nice old trees knocking around like these, uh, then get under the tree, do the detecting there until the sun comes out. And uh, yeah, just try and stay cool in the shade. I'm lucky, this beautiful Georgian hall ground, the estate grounds, is dotted with these big old trees. So yeah, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll get under the trees and do the detecting there first and I'll stay cool. And then I can get out and get sunburned and do the rest. Excuse the helicopter flying above, but this is my next target that I'm going to show you a live dig on. I like this a lot. It's faint, high pitched, 88 every time, consistent, no grunts, right over it there. Maybe a little silver, modern 1P, Georgian, button, who knows. I know I say this time and time again, but really, where else would you rather be on a day like today? Yes, I'd rather be in their swimming pool eating an ice cream, but nah, I'm metal detecting. It's what I do, it's what I enjoy, it's what I love. Let's see what this beautiful signal can give me. Oh, uh, the ground is tough, the grass is tough, it's very warm. This is what we do. This is what I do. Ugh. Do I see any sign of green cross? Don't. Oh! Oh, it's a bloody threepenny bit, isn't it? The three pence. And it's not a very good one. Crusty threepenny bit. I'll show you a close up. There it is, not in too bad condition considering the edges are a little bit crumbly but we've got a 1942 British three pence piece. The monarch is King George VI, Mr. Side Parting. I don't mind that today, I don't mind it. One more tip, 
I'm gonna take a lunch break under this tree in the shade, nice and cool. Got my crisps, got my baguettes. This has been cooled down by my my by my frozen drink. So yeah, as you can see here, chill out five minutes in the cool, in the shade. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for watching my videos, for subscribing, for leaving me comments and you know just generally supporting the channel, uh, for the donations to the, uh, the the buy me a coffee thing. I can't believe how many people are donating and it's all pain. You know I've had a, a couple of hundred pound now and it's 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 paid for a year's membership to the software used for editing. It's paid for a year's membership for the the music that I use. Yeah, it just I just yeah I just really appreciate it so much. It all goes to a good good cause and it helps me continue doing what I do, uh, what I do. so yeah let's uh, let's let's crack on carry on doing it and uh, see see how far we can take the channel because I want my next goal is 10,000 subscribers it's a long way off but you know I'll keep plodding on so yeah I hope you re hope you enjoyed this video if you find it useful and I hope that I'll see you on the next one this will probably be my last find of the day Strangely, it's coming up as a 73 mid-tone, which is very low for what I think it is. It looks like a copper coin to me, a George III half penny. But why on earth it's giving me that number, I do not know. To me, it looks like a thick copper coin all day. Actually, I think it's an old 10 pence. <laughs> an old 10 pence piece. Yeah, it is, look, flipping Nora. Well, that explains why it was a mid-tone. Yep, let's go. Well, I've just plucked this out of the ground. I believe that that is part of a fragment of a medieval bronze pot. As you can see, it's very nice and old looking with the dark green patina, the kind of object, again, which would polish up nice with a bit of wax. And uh, yeah, medieval. If anyone agrees with me, let me know. If anyone doesn't, let me know your opinion, please. But yeah, I think that's part of a bronze medieval pot. Well that's it, that's me done, I'm calling it a day. I've had a beautiful three or four hours marauding around this beautiful hillside in this glorious heat. But I hope that my tips and tricks will keep you cool on your hot days out metal detecting. You know, I'm not actually that sweaty today. Wearing white is definitely a good thing. Wearing sun cream is a good thing. Wearing a cap, having ice in your bag, it all adds up to uh, to help you have a good and enjoyable day out metal detecting in the sun. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support. Thank you to Rectons. Thank you to Noble MDT and David Pedley and everybody who supports my channel. It means the world to me and I hope to see you again on the next episode. So what have we learned about metal detecting in extreme hot weather? Stay hydrated. Make sure you wear a hat. Take lots of rest, regular breaks. Use the shade to your advantage to get out of the sun. Find yourself a water supply. Cool down any way that you can. You can keep your fines cool as well. Just do whatever it takes to stay cool. <laughs> and don't forget to wear sun cream. There are people out there who've been sending me money via PayPal and I'm so, so grateful. Uh, it's been so useful to me. So if, if anyone else wants to support the channel, you can go to my homepage and click here, buy me a coffee. Any money that comes in this way will go straight back into the channel, whether it's for recording equipment, t-shirts, other stuff like that. I'm so, so grateful for, for everybody's support. So thank you and we'll see you on the next one.